Hey everyone, welcome back to By It's Cover. I'm Leah and today we are doing a book talk mukbang. So I've tried a drunk book talk and now I'm gonna try a food book talk. I'm all for trying a drunk food book talk in the future but I feel like that would be really difficult. Let me know your thoughts. The book we are talking about today is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff because wow, I love this book. And the food for tonight is Shake Shack. So I love Shake Shack. I love their burgers and their fries. Um, I'm also trying a hot dog tonight, which I haven't had before, but I felt like I didn't have enough food for a mukbang without getting more. So I just have a shack burger here with bacon, um, only without shack sauce because they ran out. I was so upset. Some crinkle fries, the open top grilled hot dog and a vanilla milkshake because they were all set of chocolate, which also upset me greatly. I don't, I don't know how to set this up at all so that you can see it well. And I forgot to say no tomato, but that's fine. So yeah, I'm gonna take a few bites here and then we can get talking. Mm. Okay, so never night. Oh, this is gonna have spoilers, by the way. If you haven't read this book and want to, probably stop right now. I don't even know where to begin with this book. But I guess we'll just start at the top because I got things to say about that first chapter, bro. So the book starts with a sort of narrator saying that they're documenting this person's life named Mia, who is the most famous assassin in the world, I guess. So they say that and they jump right into their manuscript, I guess, of the story and set us up with the scene of um, Mia losing her virginity to some gross guy. <laughs> but every few paragraphs, it switches perspectives directly into Mia's mind. I don't like toppings on hot dogs, but I always forget that grilled hot dogs are way better than boiled hot dogs. Okay, so we're switching points of view every few paragraphs. And in Mia's mind, it sounds like we're being shown the same exact scene, but her take on it is very different. Like, the narrator makes it very romantic and sweet. This is her first time, it's a huge deal. She loves him, blah, blah, blah. And her point of view is very nitty gritty. He's rough, it's not fun. Until you get to the end of the scene, where in the narrator's romantic one, she just pays him and leaves because he was a prostitute. And in hers, she kills this guy. Doesn't sleep with that guy, different guys. And at that point, I'm still very confused as like, is it the exact same scene and she actually didn't have sex with him and just killed him and this person's very misinformed? But it's actually two totally different scenes. Same day, beginning of the day, end of day or like one right after the other, where she went and lost her virginity because she just wanted to, and then goes and makes her first kill as an assassin. And that right there set up so much potential of the narrator being unreliable, which I don't read enough of and I love a lot. It set up Mia's character of not giving a shit about bodily things like the concept of virginity and just wanting to do what she wants 
before she can't anymore, basically. Yeah, so that's the first chapter. So with that narrator, there comes a lot of footnotes put in the book that I found annoying at first. Very get in the way of my story flow. But they're super helpful for the world building because it's a fictional world fictional island, fictional city, fictional government, whatever, um, where there's three sons, so it's like never dark. You know this if you've read this. I'm sorry, I'm repeating it all. So there's a lot of slang and vernacular to address the weird different types of times of day, types of sun you get, based on this world. And those are some of my favorite parts. Like instead of calling it night, you call it a turn because you spend the turn in bed and then get up because it wasn't dark. Um, there's different types of day, never night. Um, true dark is when it actually is dark, which happens like every few years, I believe. So those are the best parts of the narrator, explaining all that. Also that the political and kind of socio background of the country is very Italian. So I know basic words like familia, but I don't know a lot of their traditions, so that was explained. And yeah, I really liked the world overall. It was also helpful having all that slang. Because so often in my mind, especially in an assassin book, I picture an assassin doing their stuff at nighttime because they don't want to be seen. They don't want to be caught. And I always have to be like, wait, it is nighttime, but it is not dark outside. <laughs> A just mental image. So character wise, back to Mia. That beginning was like such a cool setup. And then she kind of fell into the average teenager heroine role of I'm angry because my dad's dead and I want revenge, fine. But that hot-headedness gets her in trouble a lot. She doesn't consider herself attractive by any means. You know. Which is like, easy to look over, but then for a long portion of the book, they spend hinting at her having some kind of repressed memory that she's not telling us that's important. And doing that once or twice would have been okay, or maybe being more subtle about it would have been okay, but after two or three times, I knew what the memory was like I knew what they were gonna tell us so that wasn't done great but what was done great was the plot twist of who's the bad guy because I mean like the judge and the executioner and the people who um, sentence her dad to death are obviously the main bad guys that will be defeated once we get to the end of the trilogy. But the betrayer I loved that it was Ashlyn and her brother didn't see it coming. I hate I just personally hate when um, two girls are best friends and one betrays the other because I just want girls to be friends. Like Boys are annoying enough, we need each other. But it was good. And what deflected away so much from knowing it was them was all the side scenes of Hush and hinting that it was him doing all the dirty work. Which was kind of annoying because like 
you made it look so much like it was hush that of course I didn't know it was someone else because I didn't bother to think about it. I almost wish they had left it as a faceless person that I would be trying to guess whichever classmates it was the whole time. Um, now I guess we gotta talk about Trick because what is this boy? His backstory is super cool, his bastardization, whatever. His fight for redemption, heartbreaking. That's all fine and dandy. Um, their relationship. Wow. 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 Still can't tell if Mia actually loves him or is just using him for a good time like she says. Don't really care either way because it's exciting. Um, the smut scenes are incredible and hold nothing back. Wow. Which I like because using euphemisms for body parts just makes it sound really awkward. Like, please just say what's going on. And he did. And it was amazing. <laughs> Only thing was I was reading it on a plane in the middle seat between two people. And no one's reading me over my shoulder. But you just become very aware that you're around two people and that's what you're reading right now. <laughs> but what I'm really concerned about with him is, is he dead or not? <laughs> his death happened so fast I'm like grazed over it so that it makes me think he didn't actually die and will come back because that would be the normal YA thing to do but I happen to go to the back of the book and read the author's bio and the last sentence of it is he does not believe in happy endings So I have a really bad feeling that Trick is actually dead. Which means he had a very finico dare death where someone super important just dies and we just walk away immediately without addressing it, which is rude. Um, Nave, I thought Nave was really cool. Um, wanna know why the heck she was in love with that brother, cause he seems disgusting. And I have one question about her grammar. Because she speaks in third person all the time. But not just even with herself, where she says, Nave wants this or whatever. If she's speaking to someone, she'll call them by their pronouns, like she instead of you. But so then there's a couple times where she's speaking about herself and Mia or someone else and says we and I thought she would have said them to stick with her pronoun stuff. Um, all the Sahids are great. I love them. They are badasses. They hold nothing back. That is awesome. Because if you are training assassins and are assassin like they have to be. And I guess on closing notes having Mia fail the final test and not actually join no what I mean she did join the assassins but she did it her own way she didn't kill the innocent person that was nice I'm a little surprised they let her back at all but like she earned it oh I'm sad lord what's his face is dead cause I didn't want him to be like all buddy buddy with her but still kind of like a weird father figure in the weird mysterious don't talk to me way but if you bother me enough I guess I'll tell you things you know and finally to wrap this up kind of go back to the beginning on the topic of the narrator they're saying in their opening remarks I guess that Mia was the greatest assassin and also including that little line in the author's bio of no happy endings, I can pretty confidently say that Mia's gonna die at the end of book three. 
I don't know if that means she'll complete her mission, but she's dying. And that's sad. She seems cool. Okay, that's all I have to really say. I know I'm not done eating, but I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me finish this. Also, it'd be really weird. And I have to go edit all this footage. That's my thoughts on Nevernight. It was super, super good. Highly recommend. I mean, if you're still watching at this point, you've already read it, so good for you. So thanks so, so much for watching. Hit like and subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next chapter.